Hello and welcome to your 91st SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I want to talk to you about extended events. After we go through these next uh, two or three tutorials, you should be able to create and configure extended event sessions. You should be able to use an extended event session to monitor system performance. And you should be able to analyze captured extended event data in SQL Server Management Studio. Now, extended events, which are also known as X events, are the next generation tracing and troubleshooting architecture for SQL Server. So, if you've never heard of extended events before SQL Server 2012, don't worry. This tutorial and the next couple will provide a good introduction to extended events, which is a highly flexible and user configurable monitoring tool. So, um, Let's see. SQL Server Profiler has been put on the deprecated list uh, for SQL Server 2012. I mean, it's still available in SQL Server 2012, as you just saw in my last tutorial, but it's going to go away soon. So um, I'm not sure if it's gone away in SQL Server 2014, but I assume either it will be gone in SQL 14 or the release after that. So, anyway, so. Um, the SQL trace will be replaced by the extended event system in whatever future version of SQL Server, if that's 14 or later. So, extended events offers many advantages over older tools, including much, le much less overhead, better performance at scale, and the ability to capture details that were previously not observable, which is pretty cool. So, the most immediate advantage that you might enjoy is that the default system extended event session that is already passively running on SQL Server 2012 captures deadlocks. This means that for the first time you can diagnose a deadlock that happened in the past without setting up and catching a SQL trace. And this is a huge crucial advantage for a DBA, trust me. <laughs> so, Next, this tutorial and the next couple are going to introduce you to extended events at a high level and run you through a pair of example scenarios that use the tool's powerful performing capabilities. So, pretty cool. Um, let's see, a little bit about understanding the extended events architecture. Uh, as I have noted here, extended events is the all purpose monitoring tool for SQL Server from basic error capturing to advanced troubleshooting and as I put down here let's go over some basic extended events architecture terminology which is important for you to know and remember so I outlined it all here so extended events is organized around sessions which capture a configurable collection of events which are organized in categories Events as they occur on SQL Server are sent to targets to collect the data. The most basic and fastest data storage target is an event file or XEL file. .xel. Next on our list, actions or global fields describe basic information that will be familiar to you from SQL trace fields, database ID, host name, session ID, object name, and statement. Event filters or predicates allow you to refine the scope. Now, for example, by filtering requests only in the eventual 2012 database. And then next we have a package, which is a container of the previously described objects that are collectible from a module, which is provided by a Windows process, such as the main executable of SQL Server. Okay? Now, Let's take a look at how to create and configure an extended event session over in Management Studio. So, go over to SQL Server Management Studio, connect to a server, and we're going to open Object Explorer if it's not already. Expand the server node, and then we're going to expand the management folder. Then we're going to expand extended events right here. And then we're going to expand session. And then you'll see two sessions are already up. One for already always on and one for system health. 
and we'll be using this later. But for now, just something to note. Um, so now next, what we're going to do is we're going to right click the session folder and we're going to go to new session wizard. Okay. And we can skip past this introduction page. Click next. And then here, we're going to type query monitoring in the session name text box. Now, if you're attempting to troubleshoot a startup issue, selecting the start the event session at server startup checkbox may come in handy on this page, but for now, let's just leave it clear we don't need it. So we're just going to put query monitoring. Okay, we're good to go here. Um, something to note, actually, hang on a second. So we're just going to click next for now, actually. I'm getting ahead of myself, thinking two steps ahead. Um, now that we're here, we're going to select use the event session template right here. Okay, we want to click on this guy. And now what we want to select is query detail tracking from this drop down. Okay. Query detail tracking right there. We're good to go. Um, something to note. Uh, you'll find each of the built-in templates already provided and their extensive descriptions here. But if you only want to manually add events and fields, select the do not use a template option, which is right there below. Okay. So moving along, now that we have done this, we can go ahead and click next. Okay. Now we're here at the select events uh, to capture page. And note that the template has already selected a half dozen events to capture in this extended event session. These events are in the selected events box on the right side of the page. Okay. Cool. Um, on the left side of the select events to capture page, type login into the event library search text box. So, right here. All right, very good. Now, notice how the library is quickly filtered, allowing you to search for commands really easily. Pretty cool. Okay. Click the results row for login. Okay. When I do that, note that below the search results window, a detailed description of the event is provided, as well as fields predetermined for the event. So, that's down here. That's all this. Okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to click on the greater than arrow right here that points to the right, and it's going to move it over to the selected events window over here, and there you go. You see that it's there. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to click the module underscore in in the selected events window here. And we're going to go ahead and click the uh, less than arrow that points to the left. And this will now uh, remove this from so it will not show up in your session data. So let's do that. Okay. We're good to go here. Now we can go ahead and click next. Okay, so now, the Capture Global Fields page that we're on here already has some of these global fields or actions selected for you based on the template. What we want to do now is scroll down in this window and select the box next to database underscore name right here and go ahead and click next. Okay, now... The Set Session Event Filters page that we're on allows you to limit the activity returned by the session. In this case, you'll add a filter to show only activity in the AdventureWorks 2012 database. So over here in the white text box located in the Additional Filters Applied to All Events right here section, we're going to click the click here to add a clause area right here. Okay. Now once we've done that, we want to go over here to this field drop down list. It kind of looks incognito until you click on it. So go ahead and click that. And we're going to select SQL Server dot database underscore name. And there it is right there. And then um, 
you can change the selection in the operator dropdown to any of a variety of comparison choices. But for now, we're going to leave this selection set to equal, so I'm talking about right here. So, okay, we just want to go ahead and leave that the way it is for now. And then here, in value, we're going to type in AdventureWorks 2012. Okay. Alright, we are good to go here. Alright. So, this will filter session data to only include events where the request database underscore name equals AdventureWorks 2012. You could just as easily have set up a filter on the database underscore ID of the AdventureWorks 2012 database, the username, or the client host underscore name. But, this is the way we're doing it, and we're going to click next. Okay, now, on the Specify Session Data Storage page, you'll see two of the three primary targets. The ring underscore buffer target checkbox is enabled by default. This allows for continuous rolling in-memory storage of event data. However, the fastest and most versatile target is the event underscore file. Okay, now... We're going to select the box next to save data to a file for later analysis and then clear the box next to work with only the most recent data. <coughs> okay, got rid of that. We've enabled that. Now we want to change the maximum file size setting to 50 megabytes and then clear the enable file rollover option. Okay, boom. And then let's change the All right. And then when we're done here, we can click next and then click finish after that. Okay. And we, once again, this is just a summary. We can go through and see everything you did if we like. Pretty cool. Anyways, you get the gist of that. We can uh, click finish now. And now, on the Create Event Session page, despite the appearance of a large green circle with a check mark that you see, you're not done yet. The session has not yet been created. Now we need to select to start the event session immediately after the session creation checkbox. Okay, boom, we're good to go there. Then we need to select the Watch Live Data on screen as it's captured checkbox. Good there. Okay, and this is the third main way to access data, and it will open a new screen for the Management Studio Streaming Data Provider. This is the easiest way to access data, but it should be used only briefly. It also has the most overhead of the three extended events targets. Okay, now we can go ahead and click play. Now, all right, you will see the query monitoring, live data uh, window is already running and you may see it's showing some activity in your database you might not keep this window open so you can perform the next steps in the section that I'm going to be getting into uh, in our next tutorial so we're good to go um, thank you for watching this and like I said keep this up because and if you don't keep it up you know I mean I realize uh, the people watching this, it might be days or weeks before you get to the next tutorial. That's fine. You'll just have to go back and run through these steps in this tutorial number 91 again. No big deal. Um, but in my next tutorial, we're going to cover using an extended event session to monitor system performance. So I thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. Thanks. Bye.